in this rapidly expanding aesthetic and wellness space, I'm gonna bet that if you don't have a competitor right next door, there's one coming on the way. And I was recently asked about how to handle the situation when a new competitor pops up across the street. So I wanted to talk with you about how to handle competition and a new competitor if they're gonna come in, which they are if they haven't already. First of all, if a competitor opens their doors down the street and you're scrambling to figure out what to do, it's probably too late. Instead of waiting and being reactive to hope that somebody doesn't come in and become your competition, instead, let's talk about how to prepare your business now so that when it does happen, you're already in position to be competition-less. First and foremost, it's time to reorient around your mission. See, I have a feeling you didn't just open your practice because you felt like it was something fun to do. You actually have a purpose, you're making an impact, and the work that you do every single day provides a tremendous value to your community, to your patients, and to the world. And so it's a good time to really refocus on that. What is your mission? What are you here to do? Because I have a feeling that if somebody else comes in down the street, they're not gonna be on the the same mission as you and they're not going to be able to infringe upon the work that you do every single day when you're really clear about what it is that you're accomplishing with the people who walk in the door and do business with you. Number two, really get clear on your brand positioning, meaning know where you stand in your marketplace. Are you the low price leader? Are you the high price leader? If patients are coming to you for your results and are willing to pay top dollar for your services, the last thing you're going to want to do is to lower your prices to compete with Susie or Sally who opens up their med spa down the street. You wanna keep the integrity of your pricing high and you wanna to continue to provide those valuable results. Remember that your client's value system isn't gonna change just because there's someone offering Botox at a discount down the street. Continue to service your clients at that highest level. Number four is know your worth. Don't get reactive. Don't start getting imposter syndrome and getting all fearful and worrying about this other competition down the street. Remember, they're gonna have the same runway for growth that you had. Don't compare your middle to their beginning. Don't think that they're gonna just come in and all of a sudden be this hot spot where everybody wants to go. Know your worth, know what you stand for and stick to that. And finally, this is just a good standard of practice for any business at any point in time, refocusing your marketing efforts on your top 20% of buyers. So remember the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principle, which means that only 20% of your clients are actually responsible for producing 80% of the impact in your business. So who are that top 20%? Focus on marketing to them, go deep in with those clients, and I have a feeling that Susie or Sally down the street isn't going to be able to touch your business or make even a dent. And my last piece of advice is bake some really yummy cookies, take them over, welcome them to the neighborhood, and tell them good luck because they're probably gonna be out of business in three years. <laughs>